HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we preview Hiller Girls Softball. We have highlights from Hopkinton's Boys and Girls Lacrosse openers. And some elite Kenyan runners visited Elmwood School as part of the annual John Hancock Scholars and Stars program. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. On Marathon Monday, the second annual Hopkinton Marathon Spectacular will take place at Weston Nurseries. Second annual Marathon Spectacular is going to take place on Patriots Day, April 15th, so Marathon Monday, at uh, Weston Nurseries, right at the one mile marker. We did it last year and it was 38 degrees and raining, but we still had a very good turnout, so we expect a, quite a large turnout with good weather this year, and we know we're going to have good weather. Uh, like last year, we've got bands. We've got food trucks and we've got uh, Startline Brewery as a co-sponsor along with Marty's Fine Wines. So we will be open from 7 to 4 and you can get here at any time. It's easiest to get here before 7. The roads are still open. After 7, we put very succinct directions on our website so people can figure out how to get here and park. No problem. Uh, the Hopton Police have been terrific. They're going to cooperate with us. So basically coming in from the north is the way you have to do it. And uh, we expect to get a big crowd in early. We'll have uh, the Muffin House, I believe, is committed, which is great. And we've got uh, Say Cheese. We've got PJ's Barbecue. We've got uh, Goody's Kettle Corn, Snappy Dogs. So we've got all those food trucks, and we have Street Food RX as well, and they have gluten-free and vegetarian options. So we got something for everybody here, breakfast, lunch, uh, Ted, Twinnie from Startline Brewery and his brother-in-law Jeff will be here serving uh, uh, the beer and uh, Rachel from Marty's and her team and some of her suppliers will be serving Prosecco in the morning, mimosas and then wine throughout the day. Uh, this year we have a DJ, this guy named Gary Titus is coming out here, he's kind of a well-known DJ in the area and he's going to keep it more of a party type atmosphere, keep it going all day. So he starts in the morning and he comes on between sets. The three bands are the, uh, the F-Tones, they'll be on around 11.30. And then we've got Steve Spector and Hot Acoustics around 1, 1.30. And then the last band is called Soul Function Boston, and I think they're based out of the Bose Corporation. And they've played around the country quite a bit. They're pretty well known, and they've got a large uh, group um, of people. They've got uh, about 10 or 12 people in their band, so they're going to finish off. But it'll be fun. It'll be danceable music with the DJ going on in, in between, uh, plenty of tents. Uh, the whole fundraiser is for the 26.2 Foundation, which is going to raise money in part for the International Marathon Museum, which is just in the early planning stages right now. So we're hopeful that um, people come out to support that charity. We charge $20 for tickets up to the day of the event and $25 for tickets the day of. Uh, beer and food is all a la carte. Beer is going to, and wine, I should say, is $5 uh, drink tickets, and then the food is, is a la carte. So all the net proceeds for this event go toward the 26.2 Foundation. Terrific. And do you recommend people get here early due to the marathon, or can they pretty much come in at any time? So come early if you can. Be here before 7, before they close the roads. But after they close the roads, they can come at any time if they follow the directions on our website. So go to our website www.westernnurseries.com, click on the event, Marathon Spectacular, and it's very, very spelled out on how to get here. It's a little bit further around, but you can come in through the back roads and park, no problem. The Marathon Spectacular is a family-friendly event, and there will be many fun activities for the children. So the admissions is $20 per ticket before and $25 the day of. Kids 12 and under are for free, so bring families. 
certainly. Um, there's a whole kids area where we'll have games, and that's sponsored by the YMCA this year. So there's plenty for the kids to do here as well. So some of the kids' activity include this game called Gaga. Uh, we've got that going on, which is kind of a dodgeball type game, from what I understand. Uh, there's uh, Connect Five, there's giant Jenga, face painting, and, and cornhole going on. So there's a lot of activities for not just the kids, but for everybody. If you are worried about seeing the marathon, in addition to the marathoners running by, there will be a big TV on site. New this year also, we're going to have a 12 foot by 8 foot giant television inside our 40 by 60 foot tent that's going to be broadcasting the race. So that kind of creates a little excitement to see who's winning at any given time. Of course, our, our own home, homegrown Tim Kilduff will be on the back of the WBZ truck and you'll get to hear him throughout the race as well. So we have that going on too. For more information about the second annual Marathon Spectacular event, visit westonnurseries.com slash Marathon Spectacular 2019. Hiller Girls Softball started off the season this past week on a high note. They took down Holliston by way of the mercy in five innings, 25 to 5. Here is a look at this year's team. Last season, Hiller's softball finished with 13 wins and 8 losses overall and went 1-1 one and one in the playoffs. This year, they have some great experience returning to the roster and the captains are excited to get the season started. Um, I'm super excited. I think we have a really good team this year. We have a lot of depth, unlike previous years. Um, and I think everyone's working really well together so far, so that's good. <laughs> And Emily, how's your uh, feeling about the team so far? Yeah, we have a really talented team. We're lucky. Like, every spot we feel confident in, um, our offense is really good as well. I'm, like, we're excited for this season. Terrific. Uh, what have you been working on in practice so far? Uh, Katie? Uh, we've been working on um, our plays that we want to do in the games and then just working on um, brushing up on like all of our basics to make sure that we can do them perfectly in a game. The Hillers have a new yet familiar face at head coach this year and are excited to work once again with coach Shannon Alberry. Oh, yeah. uh, super fun. Practices are always loose. They're, they're chill. We play music. It's fun. And I think even though we've had a lot of coaches, it's good that Coach Albury is here just because she's coached us since eighth grade and she's kind of come up with us and she knows us, so it's going to be a good season. First year coach in the Hillers, uh, how's this group been so far to work with? Well, they've been fantastic to work with. They, um, they're really responsive, they're very incredibly coachable and I'm um, just really looking forward to working with them this season. Terrific, and uh, a lot of talented players returned off of uh, last year's roster, including your uh, two captains there. Uh, yeah. How's it been to have that um, experience of leadership on this team? Uh, it's been really good, uh, really good transition for me into this new role, uh, having 11 returning players and uh, having the, the senior captains return um, because they've already developed all those leadership skills and, and I can trust them with a lot of responsibility at practice. And for those that don't know you, uh, could you talk about your uh, background experience a little bit? Uh, sure. I, uh, I, I grew up uh, in high school, I coached a little bit of Special Olympics softball and uh, I coached a little bit at UMass Dartmouth as soon as I, when I graduated from there. Uh, and I've been teaching here for 11 years and I've been coaching in some capacity uh, with Hopkinton for, for all of those years. So. Uh, I spent a couple years with JV and, and now I'm really excited for this new opportunity. And how's it been working on this new turf field? You know, we're outside and, uh, and we're getting a feel for it and trying to break it in and, and we're just really excited that, that, uh, that we have the turf field that we can be out playing on right now. All right, Coach, yeah. we wish you the best of luck this season. Thank you. Right after our short break, we have Hiller Boys and Girls Lacrosse Highlights. Elite Kenyan runners visited Elmwood School, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. This week on HCAM Ed. Hopkins School presents their annual fifth grade talent show. 
Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton Hillers boys and girls lacrosse officially kicked off their season last Friday in Holliston. Here is a look at how the matches went. Hillers boys lacrosse opened their season in Holliston. Zach Frank tied things up at one apiece with 6.01 left to go in the first quarter. There's a shot and a goal for the Hillers. Zach Frank firing it in the senior. 3.20 left, Jake Weinstock strikes to make it a 2-2 two two game. And that is going to be a goal for the Hillers. Riley Del Ponte gave the Hillers a 3-2 lead with 9 seconds left in the first. Second quarter, Connor Sullivan nets two goals within the first 61 seconds to make it 5-2 Hillers. Later on in the quarter, Dylan McBride nets a goal for Hopkinton to make it a 6-3 game. And now Sullivan. And Sullivan rips it in. All kinds of mustard on that one. 7-3 Hillers. At 2.20 left, Riley DePonte made it an 8-4 game. Then less than a minute later, Jake Weinstock found the net again. Weinstock with a shot and a goal. The Hillers went into the first half up 9-4, and they would never look back as they take down Holliston 17-8 in their season opener. In the girls' game versus Holliston, Lydia Rudden struck first 120 into the first half. The next goal would come at 12.52 left in the first half by Cammy McDonald. And then, just over a minute later, yes. Olivia O'Connor struck to give the Hillers a 3-0 lead. The trainer rushes in the shot, and that is in, 3-1. Hopkinton led at the half, 3-1. Holliston scored the last goal in the first half, and four more to open the second half and take a 5-3 lead. After five straight goals from Holliston, the Hillers responded with three more of their own. York puts it out to Rudden. Yeah. In front, and there's the Hillers goal, Cammie McDonald. Yeah. Out in front to Rudden, and that's another goal for the Hillers. The captain, Lydia Rudden, with her first goal of the day. McDonald out to Rudden. Rudden with the shot, and that's in! 6-5 Hillers. The second half ended with the score tied at seven. Sudden death, three minute overtime, and the Hillers had an answer. Olivia O'Connor with the pass over to Cammie McDonald. Out to Rudden. Fires it over to Cammie McDonald. Go, 30 seconds left to go. Loose ball picked up by McDonald. To O'Connor. Be smart, Lulu. You got her container, Lulu. Olivia O'Connor feeds it in. The shot goal. Hillers win. Natalie Cockins. Hopkinton takes the overtime victory 8-7. The Hillers lost their next game on April 9th to Natick, 11-10, but defeated Ashland the very next day, 18-3. In the game versus Ashland, senior captain Lydia Rudden officially surpassed 200 career points. She has 138 career goals and 73 assists overall. The Hopkinton Lady Hillers currently stand at two wins and one loss on the season. This past week, the annual John Hancock Scholars and Stars program brought elite Kenyan runners to Elmwood School. Here's a look. 
John Hancock once again brought some elite Kenyan runners to visit Elmwood with the Scholars and Stars program. As always, the students had a great time and enjoyed meeting some of the elite Kenyan athletes. <laughs> and you can just walk around it. So you put water in it. So for carrying. And then this is for, here's now for people who are leaders. Leaders. Like if you, if you're chosen in the community to be a leader, they give you something like this. And then you go around, you talk with it. So there was a president, Moi. Yeah, Moi. Moi used, yeah, he was more president of Kenya. He used to talk to this. Did you have a good time? Yeah. How do you like meeting all the runners? Awesome, kind of. Do you have a favorite runner? John. Uh, How come? Because he won the Boston Marathon and we made a poster. Mr. Keene's class, as always, showed off some of their wonderful studies of the Kenyan culture prior to the ceremony. How are you enjoying Elmwood today? Are you having a good time? Yes, it's fun. You know? uh, how do you like uh, meeting all the students and seeing all they did about uh, Kenya, all the PR work? And it's great, they're excited and uh, they're, they're asking us a lot of questions about you know all the stuff that we have here, like what's the meaning of it. They want to know much about it, so it's really exciting to be here with them. Is this your first time here? It's my first time, she won it before. Excellent. Uh, are you uh, ready for the marathon on Monday? Yep, we are excited. Excellent, and um, hopefully the weather will be uh, better than last year. Yeah, that's what we are hoping, so we will see what happens. But no matter what, we have to race anyway, so we are excited for anything that comes on Monday. Yeah. You, you enjoy to see the students? I enjoy it. How do you like the artwork? And, uh, I've seen everything that we have in Kenya. Uh, you, are, you have it in uh, USA, and I'm happy to, to meet to think such thing like this in this country because it is our culture to have in Kenya. Some students also got a chance to run a couple laps with the athletes around the bus loop. No, it's uh, very motivating. The amount of work and uh, time they put into it is very encouraging. You know that people are study about us, study about where we come from. So that when you come here and run, we're just not any other skinny Kenyan running, but we, they personalize us and learn so much about us. And we, it's very surprising to know how much they know about each and every one of the athletes here today. Elmwood students made a donation to the Kenyan Children's Foundation. $3,628.11. It's just an amazing uh, to know that these kids come together. They sacrifice their, their money, their little money they get from their parents to be able to help other kids back in Kenya who cannot get what they have and they help them to get it. So this donation goes a long way. This gives a chance to kids to go to school in Kenya and be able to study and get the education that these kids are getting. I'm so excited and I'm so thankful to all those that have given to us this course. Have a good time today, Elmwood? Yes, <laughs> good time today. How would you like seeing the kids and all the artwork they did and all the studying about the Kenyan culture? Yeah, it's great. How do you say thank you and yeah, thank you. Terrific. Yes. Was this your uh, first time here, Kenneth? Yeah, first time here. Excellent, you're going to be back? Yeah, I'm back. I'll be back soon. Maybe next year I'll be back again here in Boston. I like it so much. It's a nice place. Very nice environment. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right, terrific. We wish you the best of luck on Monday, Thank you. Guys. Thank you, see you. You can view the entire Kenyan Day ceremony on our website, hcam.tv. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, April 5th at 5 p.m., poet and musician duo Phil and Trisha Knudsen are back sharing more of their work on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, April 8th at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, April 9th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, April 10th at 7 p.m., Hopkins school students gather to share their incredible talents and abilities in the fifth grade talent show on a new HCAM Ed special. On Thursday, April 11th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Appropriations Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, April 12th at 9 p.m., Cheryl Peralt sits down with HCA co-director Kelly Grill on a new episode of Meet Your Neighbor. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Lacrosse vs. Holliston game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you could stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Recently, at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, Cynthia Franca, along with Jerry Holland, hosted Creative Circle's Arts for All. There was 30 pieces of artwork on display, and the artists in attendance had the chance to talk about their pieces of art. <laughs> so we have almost 30 pieces here, so it's very good. Uh, between different generations, we have like 8 years old, and other eights <laughs> sharing art, so we're very excited about that. It's good. So our mission is exactly that, like share contribution, inspire each other, and build together um, our artistic and cultural community. So we are very happy to have you all here. Thank you so much. And it was like a stream, uh -huh. it was flowing and it froze, and the patterns were just amazing. So it's, it's kind of like you have to yeah, sometimes you find amazing patterns, but it's hard to find a composition. But um, so I'm just like going along trying to find the composition. I like the way it looked like it was flowing out of here, mm. and um, it's it's also like I've had two people talk to me about this piece already, and it's interesting just to see what other people see and what they think about it, and um, because. You know, I like I saw an egg shape, but other people saw other things, and just the way it flows. That's all about. I, I always enter the photo contest every year, and they're more of my nature photos, like bird mm -hmm. shots. Okay, good. Um, and so they, this year, this year they put one of my uh, flickers on the cover of their magazine, 
And last year, I had won an honorable mention, so they put a picture of Wasik on the back of, um, that was my honorable. So it's just nice to, you know, it's nice to share your photos because I do you do it and you do it isolated without anyone seeing your work. So it's really nice. It's just I don't care. I don't need to get paid as long as you know. It's nice to just share. I bought uh, sunflowers and they were on my table and they last a long time. There's longevity to uh, sunflowers. And as they changed, each day I would pull out my pad paper, 72 years old, sitting there with my watercolors <laughs> <laughs> and painting and just having a grand time. And uh, this, the one that's really intricate took me a few days to do. And then I thought, that's really not how I do paintings. I like to go to my soul and find out what's in there, how I feel about sunflowers. And uh, so that's how these came into the picture. Uh, you know, what's in there? They're so joyful. In fact, mm -hmm. I read a quote um, about sunflowers. And it said, sunflowers uh, are a symbol to remind us to go to your instincts, follow your instincts, your joy, and the light inside of you. And after I read that, I thought, that's what that painting's all about. <laughs> I was roaming around looking to see if there's something interesting around the creek that I could take a picture of. And I looked out, and there's this old uh, cupboard door just resting there in the creek, I mean, reeds. And those are the kind of pictures that I hope I always find because I'm looking for angles, patterns, textures, but in unusual ways. Mm -hmm. If we go to a building, sometimes it's a wonderful door, but I think the doorknob and the way it is set or something is more attractive than the whole door. You know, so uh, this was in a show in Hudson at their art uh, society and it won third place, so I thought, well, it's yes. pretty good, so I shouldn't keep, <laughs> working, keep showing it. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, when we go, we travel a lot, or we did travel a lot. Uh, I would take the traditional pictures, but when on tours or anything, when the person is showing something that everybody's going to take a picture of, I kind of go around back and see what's behind this thing that's so different. So I come away with pictures that no one has that probably will be in a show like this, but I have to tell where it is and what it is because everybody else's has the regular form of the building or whatever. So, oh yeah, this is the such and such building. And I have to say, and this is the doorknob. 